Hello, respective viewers. I'm George from Ireland. Here I am uh, in Liverpool, um, in front of the world famous Cavern Club, where the Beatles first played. They're the Quarrymen originally. Now, this is actually not the original site, which is just a few meters um, down the street, though it does claim to have some of the bricks from the original um, uh, site. Um, anyway, as the name would suggest, it's a, a basement bar. Um, and uh, there you can see on this cafe right next door, they got they got bricks with the names of famous musicians who performed um, in the Cavern Club. They had to remove a few of them, like Gary Glitter's name, for reasons you might guess. Um, and they used to be, let me see who here, can you see Jimi Hendrix? Oh, we're seeing Jimi Hendrix. Um, um, and there used to be a sign up listing the, all the names they'd removed, which rather defeats the purpose of removing the names. Um, and Queen played here and on and on and on. Um, so. Uh, it's, it's a lot in there is dedicated to the Fab Four, just in case you don't know who that is. That's a, a local nickname for the Beatles, as in John Lennon, Ringo Starr, Paul McCartney, and George Harrison. George, um, well, obviously, um, poor old um, John Lennon was assassinated by is it Mark Chapman in New York City in 1980, just just uh, before Christmas, um, and. Um, here he is without his glasses. So he's the oldest of them, born 1940, John Lennon. Um, I think, um, apart from Ringo Starr, the other three are at least, at least partly Irish. So grew up in Liverpool. They all went to Liverpool Institute, if I got that right. And then they met in art school. The others born but slightly later. So John Lennon, his middle name was Winston. He's born the height of the Blitz. His middle name was in honor of the Prime Minister at the time, Winston Churchill. And um, anyway, uh, so the others were a bit younger. They played in Hamburg, West Germany. Germany being divided back then. There you can see them in these sort of psychedelic, like, toy soldier outfits. Is that Sergeant, Lonely, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Heart Club's band? I think that was, was from the um, uh, front of that album. Remember, we used to have vinyl in those days, records, obviously cassette tapes came along in my childhood, then CDs, well, now it's all online. You've had iPods for ages, and then just get anything on the computer you want these days. Um, so there's not, not so much um, art on the cover of these things like there used to be. We used to put the needle on a record. I still remember the early 80s, the last few of those big black records. So loads of memorabilia here, they're desperate to cash in on it. Um, anyway, they, there was Stuart Sutcliffe, the fifth Beatle. You can see a film called Backbeat came out about him in about 1993, but he died very early. But anyway, they, uh, they, the Beatles were deported from Germany because um, Paul McCartney is the youngest of them, and he was 17 at the time, and he was there illegally on that basis. They'd been working in some nightclub which, which doubled as a knocking shop. So they came back into Liverpool, they're playing in these bands. Now, Ringo Starr was a drummer, and he drummed for whoever, um, for several different bands, but this one happened to be the most successful, so he um, held on to their coattails, and he was accepted as a member of the band. As a member of the band. So, um, Elvis Presley really transformed the popular music scene, although he only used to visit the United Kingdom once. He never stopped off in Glasgow Airport. There's the Elvis Presley Bar, but the only place um, in the British Isles that Elvis Presley ever set foot. That was when he was en route to West Germany, where he was going to do his um, compulsory military service in uh, the US Army. Um, anyway, so the Beatles somewhat emulated them, and they did some covers of emulated him, covers of other people's music. Um, now, it was a very different era, the early 60s. I can't remember, it, it was it Philip Larkin, I think, wrote that sexual intercourse began in 1963 with the Beatles' first LP. LP is in long play. Um, and so this, this Cavern Club is on the original site. Two Cavern Clubs, not a stone's throw away from each other. Um, but I think it was demolished and rebuilt. At least a bit of it's on the original site. So which one can really call, oh, so there's the Cavern Club and the Cavern Pub. Oh, I get it. That one's club, the other one's pub pub as in public house, like a bar you'd say in the United States, serving alcoholic drinks, maybe some food too. Um, so is a, this, this is pedestrian street, Matthew Street, Matthew with a single um, P, with a single T rather, and there are lots of uh, live music venues here. Um, so when the Beatles went on stage, first of all, they wore suits and ties and had fairly short hair, were all clean shaven. Within about three years, they were transformed. They were wearing these psychedelic colors. They had hair past their shoulders and shaggy beards and so on. So they'd really transformed the way people had to appear in public. Um, and musicologists apparently said that music shouldn't work, but it does. And they became um, wildly popular. So obviously they, they wrote their own songs as well as their, uh, you know, the lyrics as well as the music. These days songs were put together by managers seeing what will work. There was sort of authenticity back then. It was kind of missing. It wasn't, I mean, obviously they made money out of it, but it wasn't so contrived or controlled. It wasn't a business trying to work out a business model to just make the most possible money. 
Now, um, John Lennon, he managed to uh, impregnate his girlfriend, so he married her quite quickly. It was a pretty miserable marriage, and they got divorced in short order. Later, he married the Japanese um, photographer Yoko Ono. Um, but this was not very long after the Second World War, so there's a lot of ill feeling towards Japan still because um, some British prisoners of war in the Far East have been treated um, with uh, the most abominable sadism by their captors. I'm not saying most Japanese are responsible for that, and racism in it towards any nationality, including the Japanese, is obviously rebarbative. But anyway, he was strong enough to stand up to that John Lennon. They all got married pretty soon, like um, Paul McCartney married that American lady with uh, those who was yeah, that vegetarian I always forget her name um, but she died of cancer in the 90s and then he, he lived in Sussex I think it was and his daughter went to the States to enter state school by a chauffeur driven limousine I think well if you're really making this a conspicuous display of egalitarianism you shouldn't have a limo and he's certainly a vegetarian um, and against hunting and things like that he tried to buy big estates to to stop people being able to hunt so Ringo Starr um, he left music, I don't really know what he's done since. The, the Beatles split up in 1970. Was it people saying, oh, it's Yoko Ono's fault or something like that? But anyway, um, so John Lennon carried on making music right up until his death, till this um, loony, he'd been reading that book about Holden Caulfield, that, 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 that novel came and, and bumped him off. Mark Chapman, he's still in prison. Yoko Ono always opposes parole for him, despite preaching being Ruth to others. Um, so Paul McCartney, after he, he, he married, he after his wife died, he married that second one, a lady much younger than himself. I come with that Geordie model. With only one leg, she had to have her leg amputated due to a um, due to a, a car accident. She's run over in London in the early 90s, and has a daughter with her. And so George Harrison, he was attacked in his house in 1999, stabbed, survived, but he died of cancer a few years later. And he got into Hinduism a bit, singing "My Sweet Lord," or "My Guitar Gently Weeps," and things like that. Paul McCartney had that band Wings, which I thought was fairly dreadful, especially his Christmas, Christmas time. Hope you're having a wonderful Christmas time song. Though I did like his Mull of Kins tire song about the mist rolling down to the sea. It's about a Scots um, peninsula, and um, they were there were peace activists, particularly John Lennon, um, saying that they want revolution. But when it comes to whatever violence, you can count me out. So they thought that the United States should not be intervening militarily in in in, in Vietnam. He was part of the A6 committee, well funded it, John Lennon. That's a committee um, uh, looking into the execution of James Hanratty, saying he was wrongfully um, uh, convicted for the murder of Michael Gregston. Uh, there was a case involved uh, the rape and attempted murder of Valerie Storey. Subsequently, that, that conviction was found to be completely sound because uh, DNA proved that in fact it was James Hanratty. But, um, uh, John Lennon didn't know that at the time of his death, so he was a bankroll of all radical causes. There were people who claimed that um, he um, funded the IRA, but his, his, video, his widow vigorously disputes that. Look at images of them up there. So you can go on magical mystery tours of, of places relevant to them, and um, many of the places mentioned in their songs, these are locales which are real Liverpool locations like Strawberry Fields or Penny Lane. So because um, Liverpool was very involved in um, the trade in human beings into the early 19th century, Liverpool thought they ought to make amends for this and then rename anywhere which was named in honour of someone who'd made his fortune from buying and selling our own species. But then they'd had to realise that they renamed Penny Lane because it was named in honour of Mr Penny, um, whose um, stock in trade was um, Homo sapien. All right, so that's just a little bit about um, this central part of Liverpool, where it was, which was the stomping ground of the Beatles in their very early days. And I don't think any of them made any music for quite some time. They're all incredibly wealthy men. Like when um, um, Sir Paul McCartney, they were knighted, when he got divorced, his fortunes revealed to be something like 800 billion pounds. They get royalties every year. Um, okay, so please give me donations because I desperately need donations to um, to keep the channel going. You wouldn't want the channel to stop, so please donate to me on PayPal, georgecallahan79 at gmail.com. That's all small letters. Most uh, most viewers donate. And Callahan is spelled C A W L A G H A N. And um, so it's, uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Um, goodbye from the Cavern Club, Liverpool.